But anyway, let's uh, let's hop on over to Blender and we can take a look at how something like this is set up. Now, I don't have um, the scene that we're in right now uh, to, to test out, but I can show you in a really um, simple example. So I'm going to pop over here to Blender. Oh, everybody knows that cube the that default we're going to get rid of. <laughs> Bye, cube. <laughs> um, so if you have not gotten the... Uh, latest hubs blender exporter you can get that from the url that was up on the screen a second ago um, if i switch back just for a second to here you see at the top um it's at github.com slash mozilla reality slash hubs blender I'll link, that in, I'll link that in chat for everyone to get. excellent excellent thank you uh, but let's go back to blender and talk about this so once that uh is installed and everything there's two things you need to set up you need to set up a camera source and a camera target and the source really can be anything but it makes a lot of sense while you're in here to use a an actual camera object so um, I'm gonna go over to uh, I'm just gonna create a new well actually I'll tell you what let me make a, a thing first just so we have something to point at I'll, I'll cube is back I brought the cube back but I'm going to bring in um, I'm just gonna make a regular old blender camera which I don't know why the default has it angled like that I find it really annoying I'm probably gonna <laughs> I'm gonna make my own now that I know a little more about blender scripting I'm gonna make my own menu item that is a camera pointed at uh, and, and you can have it automatically add the component for you too. I could I should really do that maybe in a later stream we'll, we'll show how to do that when I'm better at it but I'm I'm not a pro yet. I'm just zeroing out the rotation on this guy and then um, rotating at 90 on X. As you know, on the camera, that little arrow is your up, which is very helpful. And um, for now, I'm going to leave it on this Y axis, but I'm going to slide it back and have it just point there at the cube and maybe just move it up a little and rotate it down a bit so it's aimed that way. Now, I probably should switch to the camera at some point so I can actually see what it's looking at. That looks pretty good. Um, little pro tip, you may want to do a split screen kind of thing here so that you can see what the camera sees mm. and then go back to what you're doing. So um, right now, I'm going to just use this cube. I'll get rid of the uh, everything but that face and... Um, this isn't really a, a blender tutorial, so I'm trying to just keep it simple. I'm going to slide this back a bit. I'm going to actually slide it up so it's not in the ground. It's pivot points at the ground, but uh, just a plain old square will be the simplest thing I do right now. And so the source will be this camera. And in order to put a video source on this, you just need to go to the regular objects properties tab, the, the orange tab over here. And if you're add-on is installed correctly it'll show up here and you can hit add component and now there is a new one called video texture source and that's the one you're looking for over in this scene category yep. and you're gonna you have to add that to a camera uh, a camera object and camera right. object yep, yep. Um, now you, in case people are wondering this camera could actually be a child of other objects in the scene mm -hmm. so if you want to animate it and do other things I'll show you some of that in a little bit but the only parameters that are showing on this, and I'll zoom this up so you can see it a little better, inside the video texture source component um, is the resolution and the frames per second. And this is actually really important because uh, if you're broadcasting whatever this camera sees at like the highest resolution possible, you could really kill performance in the scene. Yep. And the frame rate too is, is going to be important. I mean, it's important to remember that this camera is rendering the whole scene, you know, its view again, uh, you know, so it's kind of like twice the twice the performance cost of rendering the scene normally. Um, and so if you're doing that at, you know, 30, 60, 100 FPS or something like that, you're, you're literally going to be like having your performance in the room. So definitely try to keep this as low as you can, you know, manage mm -hmm. with whatever effect you're trying to achieve. Um, and then, yeah, keep the resolution to something, something sane. For now, I'll leave the defaults. But mm -hmm. the other thing to consider is how far away you're going to be from whatever screen you're projecting this. And on. how big the surface, how big the surface you're going to be projecting it on is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's actually pretty cool if you set it very low, and it's a, it's kind of a look to have it kind mm -hmm. of pixelated and and, mm -hmm. and low res, um, to try to simulate like a jumbotron at a stadium or something like that. And depending how you configure your texture too, um, you can set the sampling mode so you know such that it it um. 
you know, is actually pixelated or blurry, depending on what you're trying to do, because it, it'll actually use the material properties uh, of whatever material you're adding it to. That's actually one of the most exciting parts. So I'll leave this at the defaults for now. Um, just know that 15 frames per second is going to look a little choppy compared mm -hmm. to what it looks like just moving around in hubs, but that's okay. Um, so we've got the source ready, and I like to do that first, um, mainly because when you go to pick the target, it has to exist, and so I like doing it in this order. So um, I'm going to select this. Now, this one's a little bit different from maybe some of the other components that you may have seen before. So instead of um, putting it on the object or the mesh or something, it actually goes on the material, um, the material itself. So I'm going to create a new material for this. Um, for now, it's just a principled BSDF, regular old, uh, you know, sort of PBR shader. Um, but what I will do is scroll down a bit till I find the component area, the hubs area, and I'll hit add component. And on this one, this is still listed under avatar, which is maybe not the best place for it, but uh, video texture target. And then you get to choose on this, and you may have seen this before if you did the avatar, video avatar. Um, are you going to replace the base color map, the emissive map, if it has one, or both? I like mm -hmm. to use an emissive map on this, so I'm, I am going to pick it. And then the most important thing here is picking what the source is. Where am I getting my texture from? And you need to open that menu up, and it should list anything that has the video texture source component on it. Yep. This, this, is a, this is a new feature I added to the Blender add-on um, to allow components to point at other components. And this is going to become important as we're starting to think about triggers and, and other kind of interactivity things. Um, it's going to be important for components to be able to, you know, look for other components. And, and this specifically only shows, um, you know, objects in the scene that have that specific component on it. And so um, this feature is going to allow us to do like a lot more, you know, complex interactions between multiple objects. And so it's... It's really cool. That, that was actually not too hard to add, which is really cool. That's so great. I really look forward to that because yeah. um, what I'm discovering is that there's so much you can do with all these little components that I think of like just these little Lego blocks, but what mm -hmm. you can make out of them is so much cooler than the, the parts themselves. So, um, so, okay, so the source and the target are ready to go. I do need to set up the material properly, though, so I'm going to go to the shading tab here, shading workspace, and look at this. Now, the default is just like this white texture. Um, what I like to do is put a, an image texture on the screen, and this is pretty cool too because you could have that image be a placeholder, like maybe it's just a picture or looks like a little, you know, please stand by or, you know, stream starting soon kind of like thing. And um, when the video gets triggered, it'll just turn on. So Yeah, man, right now, it just as soon as the, the, the two components load, they'll just immediately connect uh, to each other. So you won't really see this. But in the future, I can imagine things where we'll have the ability to turn this on and off or switch between multiple sources. And then and then at that point, the you know, the texture you include will will be uh, important. Yeah, switching between multiple cameras is like the dream to me, because yeah. then you can I really mean, set up a virtual TV studio or something. Exactly. So, um, so for this, I'm going to make a new image, and I'm just going to call it like temp image or something. Doesn't really matter, and the the size of the image doesn't really matter either. So you might as well make it pretty small. I'm just going to make like a 32 by 32 pixel black image, um, unless you want the image to be something else. But again, you won't ever really see this, so I'm just going to plug it in. Now that would be enough. Um, in this case, I also want um, emission. So basically, if you don't know what that is, I want the, the screen to really look lit up, not just um, a color. I want it to look like it's actually you know, glowing in a, in a sense. It won't glow, I shouldn't say that. It but, doesn't have bloom yet. But um, yeah. I want it to look like if there's no lights in the scene at all, I want you to still be able to see the screen. So um, the setup for that involves adding a, and I just have these on the hotkey, but um, is to add an add shader here at the end. And then you're basically going to mix together the, uh, the BSDF node and a emission shader node. And so you plug that one in. doesn't matter which one they're in. Um, and that's the it. The other thing you can do for, for this, too, is you can also just use this as an unlit material. If you're, if you're not um, looking to make the screen glossy or reflective or anything like that, um, you know, it'll be more performant to just use an unlit material if you're just looking to get a thing that's just always bright. Um, right. And in that case, um, the setting for this, for sorry, for the um, 
the target mm -hmm. um, base color map and emissive map like they're kind of irrelevant at that point uh, except yeah for I mean you still need to have base color map but you can yeah you can just leave emissive unchecked mm -hmm. so you could remove this and this node and just use a background node and mm -hmm. and uh, you'd, you'd be all set actually get rid of that one too well, and then just use the background node um so that's it uh i'm trying to think is there anything i'm missing dom um so there is a, a restriction currently with the way that this stuff works where it's not gonna be able to render itself um and so you have it pointing at itself and that's not not i mean you'll just see nothing uh in the camera uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> um but it's that's that's something that um is currently a restriction we can have it work that way it's just a little bit more expensive because we'll have to use you know, two textures and stuff. It's going to, have to right. swap back and forth to be able to render itself. But um, yeah, right now, uh, as of as of the time of this recording, you, you, the camera can't render itself like its own texture. your own head. The, uh, the texture target too, like um, it won't be able to render it. But yeah, also yeah, that's another restriction too. Like your own head is not going to be visible in the camera right now. But that's that's a, a minor. Uh, Other people's heads will. Detail. Other yeah. people's heads. Will, yeah. I am going to do one thing before I export this, just for our own sanity when we're looking at it and trying to figure out where the camera is is to i'm going to put the cursor here where the camera is and then i'm going to create a uh just a a little sphere or something maybe cone. a cone yeah cone would be good um just so that i know uh like roughly where that uh mm -hmm. that camera is pointing that's not very accurate but that's fine that's um enough good enough for for what i need um and you may be wondering well is the camera going to see inside that cone and you're correct it would um assuming its back faces are not called so i'm going to just slide it um uh sorry just on on its local axis local back axis. back a little bit just so it's not in the way of the camera but that should do it and i'm ready to export now there's one more gotcha and this gets me every time <laughs> yeah, this this got me a bunch of times when I was working on it. I'm gonna export as a GLTF. Um, I'm um, going. We can't see that window. Oh yeah, you can't see the window. That's unfortunate. Um. Well, anyway, you could just describe it. It's 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 inside your GLTF export settings in the very top section where it says there's a drop down that says include. You need to make sure cameras is turned on in there. You probably never really worried about that before, mm -hmm. um, but cameras is a thing that can be exported. So um, you'll want to turn that on. And then I'm going to drop this in a folder of mine. And once you, um, once you change that setting in the GLTF export dialog, you can actually save the settings so that it persists you know, in, other, in other files and other... So it won't get uh, you again. Times you export, but you know, you got to be careful with that because if you had other settings you didn't want to save, it's a bit tricky, but... Yeah. Okay, so I've exported it. Trust me that I did. And I'm going <laughs> to go back to... Um, our scene here and I should be able to just test this out by dropping it in the hubs room you don't have to go through spoke or, or a whole mm -hmm. export process just for testing which is one of my favorite things about working on the web um, let me just grab the one that I just made let me find it I know you can't see my screen I'm glad you can't see the rest of my screen because like, yeah, you're showing off your your bad file hygiene. Yeah, it would be very bad. Um, <laughs> so let's drop this in. And where is it? Oh, it's so tiny. But let's let's zoom it up a bit. Okay, you can see that cone. Yeah, and so like I said, uh, it's like just seeing through itself. Like the fact that it's pointing at itself doesn't really matter here because no, it, no. it can't render itself. Um, and yeah, the field of view is pretty narrow, so it's going to be hard to. Okay. The other thing is that it's using a sort of a 16 by nine aspect ratio and I'm projecting it onto a square yep. thing. So it's going to get all stretchy and weird. I did this on purpose because I wanted to illustrate like, this is what you run into at first. Oh, it's also sideways. Look at that. Oh yeah. Well, that, the the, yeah, this is turned. a, yep. But yeah, so I'm, I'm in the camera now here. So this this could happen to you, and, and you can see it is lower resolution than you know <laughs> other things. But uh, let's go back and fix it uh, because that's obviously not what we want. So this this was a good uh, example of what might happen to you. So another thing to check here is 
Let me just check something. Um, let's see. Uh, let's open up the UV editor. And let's think. Oh, about... and the UVs on this are probably also not correct because you started with a cube. And so the UVs on this are just going to be probably the center of that. Oh, you make a really good point. That's probably what's happening. Oh, yeah, it's just up here in this tiny. So the camera's seeing like a big area here, and we're only we're only yeah, we're giving you like a, a, a tiny square. Here. So okay, not the best uh, not the best thing I did there. But what I'm going to do is uh, just stretch this out to fill. You did it on purpose. It's a learning exercise. Exactly, right? Dom. You Keeping called us it. On our toes. Thanks for covering for me there. <laughs> so I'm going to do a project from view uh, on this so that and it bounds on so that it goes full full size. That's like the easiest way to get it there. Um, again, though, it's still square, and the, the camera is not shooting a square image. So you mm -hmm. could go either way. If you want to make this um, surface more of a 16 by 9 look, you can. Or you could set the camera to just render square. I'm going to do the square on the camera first, just to show how to do that. So um, you can go to this, and in your resolution, you would set it to some, you know, double the same value, right? Like, uh, mm -hmm. so um, I'll do 1280 by 1280, since that's what it is right now. But, you know, we could do less. I could do 1080 by 1080 or something like that. And then, um, or 1024, or whatever, whatever you yep. want to do. Yep. And then um, the other thing is in Blender, as Dom mentioned earlier, it does respect some of the camera settings and render settings. So if you go to the um, output properties, you can set your X and Y resolution here. Yeah, so when you're looking at the... Um, like and now the, the camera view, is actually view square. from the camera, exactly. When you're looking at the view from the camera, it's going to be using your render settings there. Um, and so if it's important to change that if you're trying to frame it correctly. And, and also the field of view gets affected by that too. Um, so if you have that setting correctly, it's not going to be framed exactly like it is in Blender. But if you set that to the same aspect ratio, then the, that, that view you get in Blender should be the same view you get in Hubs. Yeah, so this now will show like the whole surface here. And it's also- yeah, although, although it's not rendering that surface. Not it? rendering the surface, right. I know that's a little confusing. I <laughs> should have pointed it at a duck or something, but mm -hmm. um, but that's okay. We'll, I think people will, will figure it out. But so we've got the resolution to match and we got that. And we've also, um, I should make sure that the UVs are straight up and down, but I think they are now that I projected from view, so. Let's re-export and with the yeah, one, same one useful way settings. for the um, to, to make sure your UVs are correct is um, like when you're in Blender, you can have it generate a default um, image for you that has like you know letters and stuff printed on it, and then you can use that to make sure that you're. Uh, that might have been a better temp image if I had done uh, a new texture like this and then picked instead of blank, picked like color grid. Yeah, it would give me. Well, this is very low res, but it will give me. You'll still be able to tell if it's in the right, right orientation, I think. Yeah, so you can see it's going a certain direction. Uh, the letters aren't displayed on there. Yeah, though. I know because it's so low res, but right. you, you get the point. Just make sure it's <laughs> it's it's upright. Um, but that's the pro tip there. So I did re-export it, and I'm going to delete the one in our hubs room. Let me switch back to hubs and let's check it out let's see what we got mm -hmm. aha that's already better i can tell mm -hmm. even at its small size so that camera is pointed at the screen area and if dom goes between them uh you'll see it is showing him on this surface but that camera could be anywhere it could be pointed mm -hmm. up at the sky it could be pointed uh like other ideas, right? You if you want to keep tabs on the whole scene, you could point it top down and get, you know, a bird's eye view of the whole the whole space. And one of the settings in Blender too is is uh, whether the camera's a perspective camera or an orth orthographic camera, and so you could create an orthographic projection too if that's a thing you want to like like for a top-down view that could be cool. Um, there's lots of lots of 